If you use Cycles Blender and you are happy with the results you're getting, please watch the next video. But if you're not happy with the results, this video is for you. Blender Octane. Blender Octane is another alternative that you can use for a render engine. If you have a single GPU, you are able to run Octane. If you're running multiple GPUs, you will have to pay for the subscription, but it is free for a single GPU user. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get set up with Blender Octane from downloading to getting it completely set up and ready for rendering. My name is Patrick LeVar. I've been using Blender Octane for the last two years now, but this last year I've been documenting my journeys of learning Octane because there's not a lot of resources out there and I'm trying to help people who are interested in Octane. If this is the video for you, let's get straight into it. So I'm going to walk you through how to install Blender Octane. This is going to be a little bit more lengthier than some of my other videos. I'm going to go step by step. So by the time Time you're done with this you will have it on your computer and it installed and up and running i do not have any other version of blender on my computer at the moment if you still want to keep your vanilla blender that's no biggie i would just recommend probably installing to a different hard drive or just kind of make sure they're not ending up in the same blender folder okay keep them kind of out of their in their own folders first thing first when you come to the website this is what you're going to see and a lot of people post go straight to downloads we're not going to go to downloads we're going to go to shop and once we get into shop we're going to go to the free trial you click free trial right here we do not want octane x we want octane prime free tier okay click on that and this here it is octane render prime free tier for cuda and these are the ones that's available for free blender daz unity and unreal engine free for personal and commercial use terms of conditions so here here are the restrictions that are on this use of this software is available only while online connecting via the internet to the octane licensing server so what i've learned is basically it connects on just to make sure to check your license and you're okay to go and then that's pretty much reason why you need to be online only a limited subsets of plugins are available see above do not know what they mean by plugins because the plugins that i typically use with the blender they're all okay they you know they don't i don't have any issues octane render standalone is not available in the prime tier we're not worrying about that octane render offline usb doggle is not supported so i mean if you had a little special doggle usb 10 you plug it in and i guess you can you don't have to be connected to the internet that doesn't apply to us a maximum of one gpu is available for rendering okay so if you run multiple gpus you can only use one gpu that is one of the downsides other than that if you want to run multiple gpus you will need to go back up and get octane x or and do a, a paid version no networking rendering available in the free tier so if you have multiple machines and you got them all networked together and you got this render farm you won't be able to use this you'll have to go and pay after that what you're going to need to do is make sure you have an account with otoy you're going to need to log into your account or make an account it's very easy it's free just do your email blah 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 you know the deal and once you are logged in and your name is up here you're good to go so what we're going to do is click on try now Again, if you're not logged in, it's gonna send you to a different page. You're gonna to have to sign in. So make sure you sign into your account before you hit that try now. Now we're inside of the Octane Prime tier application completed. Mine is all ready to go. You have successfully applied for your Octane Prime free tier offer. Now, Octane Prime for Blender. As of me, I'm updating this as this video is updated. It is at 2004.04.03. This is their version, their more stable version important you need to download install and run both octane server and octane blender edition in order to achieve octane for blender if you want to see the manual for further instructions you can click on this here and it will take you into their manual and unfortunately the manual is really not up to date it's okay but it's that's that's why i have a blender octane community because this wasn't enough okay <laughs> what i want to do is we're going to download the blender octane edition this is a standalone version of blender octane i'm not going to do the plug-in version this is the standalone again we're going to do that we're going to go ahead and just click on that and let that download and then I also need to download the Octane Server Prime. Does it matter? Each, each time you upgrade or you change to a different version or they release a different version, you have to also update the server. On my previous version that I uninstalled, I have to download the new server for the new version. Okay, so they work in pairs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and download that too. 
now that I got that downloaded here in my browser, it's already kicking up an error where it is basically saying we do not trust this file. Again, depending on what your virus stuff is, you can see here I have these errors. So if I bring up my file in my download file, I have these two unconfirmed right here files and they don't even show up like it doesn't work. So make sure you turn off all your security stuff in order to make these OK. And for me, I just click on these three buttons here and I go ahead and say keep and I just go ahead and sit sure more keep it anyways. And that's just because I don't know some metadata on the back end, probably that's not whatever. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on both of them. Keep, save, OK, keep anyways. Now it should be completed and then boom. And then now we have a .exe file and wait for the other one to kick in. Boom. Now they both are OK and there's a .exe file. So now I'm just going to go ahead and open up the location. And I have my two files right there, my prime server and my Octane Edition. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click on the Blender Octane Edition. And then I guess, do you want to allow this application unknown publisher to make changes to my device? Yes, I do. Like I wouldn't do this if it wasn't from Otoy website. Do not, if you get it like from a GitHub or somewhere else, do not install it. Make sure it's from the Otoy website. That's the only reason why I trusted this. Here it is, installation, Blender Octane Edition. Setup will go through. And again, here is my edition 23.1283, whatever, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Most people know how to do this uh, install, I agree. Now this is where you can go if you already have a Blender Octane on your hard drive and it's going to put it in the C program drive, maybe you might want to separate it and put it on a different hard drive. When I did run two versions of Octane, I would have one on a separate hard drive and one on a different hard drive just so they both weren't on the same hard drive and in the same folder because you might get some weirdness happening between them. I'm okay because I'm only using Blender Octane so I'm going to get okay and I'm going to let it do it, its thing. Finished uninstall. <laughs> Finished Blender Octane Edition installation finish now next we need to install in the octane prime server again that uses our to check our license and make sure we're okay and it's a proper account well, again i'm going to hit okay this is going to go a lot quicker because it's way smaller file it's really small so it should go by really quick hit next hit accept again i'm just going to leave that in the same place all right, boom, that is finished. So we are all finished with that. We've got everything installed. So now let's go ahead and that's all you need to do from the website. Make sure you still keep your password and keep everything because if you need to update again, this is where you come and update. Again, sometimes it says expired and you're gonna need to upset. The only time I ever have ever need to update it again is when I do an update like I keep I'll come back and check just to see where this number's at and like if there's a new version so uh, the last time I did it was in January so this is the April version so that's why I'm updating we got that we can close that out make sure you're connected to the internet go into your programs and you should see right here blender octane edition I'm gonna go ahead and fire that up and you can see here on the top blender 4.0 again we're not it's not available for 4.2 at the moment of this release of this video and the first thing first, what most people do is they try to fire the render up immediately and think that it's going to be, you know, Octane. Technically, it's not because if we look here, we're in EV still. What we need to do is we need to switch into Octane. We scroll here. Here is Octane. Now, if I click it and then again, if I hit render, nothing's happening. Everything is clear. If you look right here, it says no render service at this address. OK, so what we need to do is stop that. And what you need to do is make sure your server is turned on. What I did here is I quickly went into my programs and then I literally just went over to Blender and you'll see Blender Octane Edition come in here and then I right click on it and I say pen to taskbar. So everything is right here on the bottom so I don't have to dig into this all the time. And it's the same thing here. You're gonna tap in, you're gonna go Octane and here's Octane Server Prime. I just pinned it to the taskbar so I don't have to do this each time. So here they are. Right now, you're gonna need to turn on this server. You click on that and that's gonna activate the Octane server so it can connect your license and make sure you're all good to go. You click here and you can see here's my little Octane logo and it says right now that it is deactivated. It is not activated. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna click on that. I think double click. All right, and for you guys, since it's the first time you're signing in, it's gonna ask you again for your old toy password and your old toy uh, account information. Go ahead and put that account information on and hit active, activate. It's not doing that for me because I've already done it before, so that's the only reason why it's not asking me. It's not a first install for me. 
but your page will look something like this and then you will have the uh, it will have a slot to say put in your uh, account information boom you should be okay once this turns green i octane is activated to use okay so you're all gay green is good now also people freak out they're like hey it says expired on may 13 2024 it doesn't expire i don't know why it says that trust me i've had octane on my computer once for a year and it never had issues with it again it just it just says that i don't know why but it does but it is free don't worry about it you can continue to use it after this expiration date so i'm gonna go ahead and hit close and make sure now if i hover over it now it says activate it that means we're okay to go we come back here and we go ahead and fire up the render the first initial time it might take a little bit of time we look at everything everything is black why is everything black because our world setting is still set up for uh, for cycles and we need to switch it over for octane we also need to set up our render kernels here okay if we look here our kernel right now we don't have anything set up the basically to get everything set up what we're going to do is go to our render kernel next so i'm going to go to layout i'm going to pull this opens here so we can see and i'm going to click on this right here and if you look down we have a couple of extra things added here we have this octane render aovs this is where we get our passes for compositing and like vfx stuff then we also scroll down we have octane kernels this is going to be our what we use to switch our render kernels and then we also have octane composite this is where we do compositing inside of octane so we're going to go to the octane kernel here first okay and then what I'm gonna do here in this kernel here what we're gonna do is you can literally just press right here quick add node tree boom there it is it sets us up with the render kernel but this is not the one that we want this is a direct lighting kernel now I'm not gonna get into what all the kernels do that's what I you know my, my community's for and we get more in depth and stuff like that so if you're thinking about wanting to go more in depth you can definitely take a look at that for right now I'm just gonna get you guys set up with the basics and the path tracing one that is what we want so what all I'm gonna do is grab this and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that then I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna go to octane kernels right here and then uh, we want path tracing kernels right or some people even use the photon but typically most of us all use path tracing kernels the cinema 4d guys this is what we're basically using i'm going to take this kernel out and plug it into the kernel and then that's pretty much all we need to do in here again those other kernels that will be for another different video from here now we should be almost good to go if we come back over here now if you notice on this side over here we've have this is it's filled in now it says octane kernel path tracing and here's all of our samples here's our max sample let me go ahead and pull this out here's all of our samples right so diffuse specular this is everything right we're ready to go now what we're going to do is see if we can see anything now let's go ahead and hit record uh, the render button and again we still don't see anything many people are like dude it doesn't work it doesn't work it works again like i said previously we need to change the lighting the world lighting to octane it's still sitting in cycles again if i was to come back here and open this back up let's switch this over to the shading tab and look there it is this is the corporate well one we already have materials but these are cycles materials they don't work with octane we want to switch this to world and there it is again we don't need that let's go ahead and just what i'm going to actually do is just going to press up here press x and then we're going to press new now look at it it changed it gave us a, a, a whole different setup here it's actually given us a texture environment so let's go ahead and see if we can hit render now boom i hit render there is the world we're finally seeing stuff but we're still not there just yet okay check it out what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this texture environment here and i'm going to go ahead and straight load in an hdri right off the back to show you guys how all i'm going to do is press shift and i'm going to go image actually i'm going to go i m and we want an rgb image we okay take our rb rgb image plug that into the texture i'm just going to load in an hdri anything that will work all right boom there it is i've got an hdri loaded up i'm going to close some of this stuff out here so we can just get a nice clean viewport and there it is but wait we're still not there why does everything look blown out and like overly exposed because we're not in the right color space for octane octane does not need a color space it wants it to be raw what we're going to do is click on a render tab scroll all the way down here to the bottom all the way down to color management flip this down and you can see here it's set to rgb agx none well we don't need that what we need to do is go to view transform and select raw now this is what we're supposed to be seeing this is the proper flow for us 
that looks cool now we've got our, our light and everything set up properly but we still got a few other things we need to assess out now i showed you here quickly how we can set up our hdri this is basically the hdri setup for example maybe you don't want to see this background you want your you just don't want to see this background what we can do here is you look here we have environment visible environment okay so what i'm going to do is grab this texture node that we brought in i'm going to be shift d duplicate it down and i'm going to go ahead and plug that into here and now we should see a white background but we don't see anything and the reason why is we need to tell this node hey i want you to be my back plate click on that now we're seeing everything the way we can control this and then we can change the color and there that's our back plate this is being visible again if we turn that off we're seeing our hdri it's the same thing with reflections uh, reflections and refractions if i had glass or something i want this hdri to show in it i leave it unchecked but if i had glass and i want this background to also reflect in that i need to make sure these are all checked now everything in the environment is going to reflect and how and show this green background so that's how we do that one other thing while we're still setting the world like if you don't want to use an hdri maybe we just want to use a sun so what we can do here if i go ahead and take these and i'm just going to disconnect them for a moment move them down out of the way if i come in here and press shift a and then i'm going to go to octane environment and here I have daylight environment. Now, like you see, it's this bigger node here. If I go ahead and plug this and plug it into environment, now I have like basically a sky system, right? And matter of fact, I can actually bring in the Nashida sky system that we have in cycles. If I come in here and if you scroll this open a little bit, right here where it says daylight mode right now we're using octane daylight mode you can come over here and boom there are different ones and here's the nishita one boom there it is and again we've got all these controls here if you wanted to make some changes again the sky there it is okay that's working then remember if we were using something and we wanted to have it our, it reflect the sky and background that means i need to also tell it hey i want you to use this as my visible my visual <laughs> visible environment i want it to see in my back plate i want it to be in my reflections and i want it to be in my refractions and that will show up okay so that's important to make sure you do or if vice versa you don't want that but you want the sky system again we just come over here check back plate boom now i can come over here and i can move my sun around there's my sun i can move that around and things like that let's throw in a ground plane here just so we can get a shadow and there you go now you've got to be able to move the sun around and if you keep scrolling to the side the daytime the time of day changes now we got the long shadows of golden hour check it out that's super cool right and you just keep going around you keep going around and the opposite right so i'm not going to go all in deep on the environment no texture shade again that's something that a different video but we'll get into it. but this is just the basics here play with this experiment and uh, figure out what you want to do with that so that's basically how we can get our world set up here for the sake of this i'm just going to go ahead and throw back in my hdri again just plug that out throw that into the environment i can take this guy and i can just delete him so we don't have a visible environment and there we are back to the beginning okay all right guys so now we're inside of my setup file this file will be available on the gum row if you guys are interested in it you can download that and basically be all set up like this i have a bit my render preview over here workspace my shader setup right here a couple of other things shading the setup is a little bit different and then i do have uh pretty much everything else that is needed here but if you guys are interested in that you can download that so what I'm going to do is show you a couple of plugins that you really should basically have, especially when you're using Blender Octane. It really helps just the workflow. The first one to going to be is Octane Node Wrangler, the Node Wrangler version of Octane for octane what i'm going to do is scroll into my preferences and if i come over here and i'm going to go octane and you'll quickly see here this is another one plug in here octane tools but it's not working with this new version for some reason so i guess they might need to make an update but this is a really powerful tool but it's not working if we look here i have right here node wrangler custom built for octane we're going to go ahead and take that one on we want that so i'll have the link down in the description for all of these plugins where you can download them this is a definitely mandatory one also basically have 
power save, which is right here. You want it to, oh man, this one saved my butt so many times, guys. Trust me, power save. Even if you're using vanilla blender, I would still recommend having this one on here. Power save because blender octane does crash just like anything else does, right? So those are my two mandatory ones that I really look should have on there, okay? So I'll have my power save on. I will have my octane node wrangler version. The octane node wrangler version, if I come in here and just add in, for example, a cube, then we scroll this over here a little bit, add in a material, let me go ahead and fire up the render. I already do have in my startup scene, I already have an HDR baked in and you can clearly see we were getting a little bit of the reflection of the HDRI in the top of the cube here. Let's make the cube a different color. There it is. You can see that reflection. And I remember I showed you in the past video how if you wanted to see that, if you don't want to see that reflection of the HDRI, that means I just come over here and change this reflection to black. Now we're seeing the blackness and it's reflecting onto the cube. Okay. So there's that. Let me matter of fact, we can just go ahead and kill that for now. And there it is. With the, the Node Wrangler 8 for Octane, which is really nice. If I come in here, press shift and I'll go add in a noise texture right here. I'm just going to go in to add a noise texture. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and already you can see if I hold down shift and alt and then right mouse drag over and release, boom, it, and I plug this into the albedo, super quick and easy. It's already working. If I wanted just to, for example, preview this, I would hit shift and alt, actually, sorry, I will hit control alt and then I can do my node preview just like we would in any other things. There's that, that works out really nice. Let's say for example, I have a material that is made for cycles. Let me bring something in made for cycles. I quickly just downloaded Blender Kit and I just downloaded a rock and I'm gonna quickly show you how we can convert this. Here is our material. We have the cycles material, which needs to be converted over to octane, which is really easy. Here we just need to make sure, for example, we have our displacement plugged into the proper thing here. Displacement, normal map is in the normal. Roughness into the roughness, metallic, metallic, and base color. As long as you have a basic setup like this, you should be okay to convert materials. Literally, once you're in the material tab and on the object, click on materials, and then you'll see this little tab here, converters, click on that, boom. Convert to Octane, only the selected material, hit OK. Now it converted it over to Octane here. And again, you just check your, your uh, look, make sure everything is still cool here. We should have our rock here and let's look, open this up. There is our albedo. It is plugged into the albedo. And here it is, metallic in the metallic, vice versa. And you scroll all the way down here. Texture displacement is a little bit different in Octane. We don't have to have things subdivided, which is really nice. We can just have a magic of an Octane. We got a displacement node and it's set very low here. Boom, here it is. Here is our rock and then our rock height, which they were using for their displacement. And then the normals here. That it looks like everything is good to go. What I will do is come in here, tab in here, and then fire up the render. And boom, there is our rock. There is our rock converted from cycles material over to octane. Again, this only works with just a basic setup. Like if everything is, especially if you're using PBR materials, it works out pretty well. Like this guy was a octane, uh, a cycles guy. And I just literally, they, all the maps were in the proper slots and they were named properly and it converted over very easily. When things start getting to complex node setups, it's not going to work that easily. You'll have to kind of like almost rebuild them from scratch. But if it's just a general thing with PBR materials, you should be okay to go. It also the same thing if I wanted to set up a PBR material very easily. For example, here is my cube. I'll click on my cube, hit new material. Then I'll come over here, click on this, hold down control, shift T and then we'll go ahead and load in our material that we want to use here I have again color I'm gonna select color I'm gonna select my height I'm gonna select my normal roughness and then just hit import and bada bing it does the same thing it connects everything up everything should be good sometimes you just need to check about our legacy gamut here when you're bringing in materials like this this is set to 2.2 this should be one and everything should be one except for the albedo. The albedo should be 2.2 and everything else should be okay. Then I typically will come in here and I'll change this from Octane to GGX Energy Preserve. And then we jump back over, hit render. Boom, there it is. We've got like this cardboard box material on the cube here. Super easy, ready to go.
And it's also easy to set up our assets. Maybe you had assets from cycles. The materials will need to be converted over to Octane. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't really bother me because I've done the work and I've already converted some of my assets. Let me quickly show you how to bring in assets. If I go to my asset library and scroll over here, asset library, here is the default one that comes with Blender. If I wanted to bring in my own, of course, what I'll do is if you don't know how to do this, you go to your preferences. You scroll down to file path here, asset library. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to press that and then you'll go to wherever your file is saved at and hit add asset library and then once you do that, go ahead and make sure you save your preferences, close that out. Now, if I come in here, go to all and then here it is school material database volume two and this is all the materials that my community have made we uh we do a monthly type of update where basically any materials that anybody makes in the community we share them together and we make an asset library file in which we update monthly this is basically all the materials here that we've made in the past month and a couple of other node materials like a separate rgb a roughness generator node that just generates different noise patterns for roughness some other specialty stuff that we've done for example, if I take this car paint and just drag this over, again, these are all octane materials. If I click on my cube here, and then we will jump back over into, into the shader tab. Here is the material that I just dumped on here, this basic car paint material. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. Super nice and super clean. Boom, I think uh, Tim thinks this so too. He's got a great smile on his face, right? <laughs> so that's that, that's how we do that. So the asset library still work. And then, like I said, again, I've had this garbage asset that I bought was it was originally for cycles. And if I go back over to my asset library and load that up also, you can see that how this works here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back into my preferences. I'm gonna add a new database and I'm gonna jump into where I saved it. Then I'm gonna go here and select it. Here it is. Boom, here is my trash asset, which was originally a cycles asset library. But what I've done, just like over in my free time, I've literally just came in and converted the materials. They all had image maps, like I showed you before. They had a roughness and a, a normal and albedo. And all I've done was just over time, did that same process, click on it, go over to materials and then convert option. And then boom, now I have my whole garbage asset converted over to octane which was really nice because it's still i have it for cycles and i also do have it for octane if you do have assets that you made or things that you use inside of cycles you know image map based setup or a pbr setup you're, you're still going to be able to use them and again if it's something a little bit more complex then yes you're going to have to totally rebuild that which again in the community we work together to try to to rebuild some of those like right now we're working to rebuild some of the the grass wall uh, assets putting those together for us because we know that it takes time to do that and it's better to have more people working on one project than just by yourself there's that all right guys hope that helps out make sure you save your default setup file so you don't have to read whole d blah, 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 do this whole process over and over and over but if you guys want to learn more you want to get more value out of this check this out i've got this free guide here it's going to be posted on my gumroad it's free you can download it on there and it's going to walk you through how to build up this little keyboard thing that i've got here we're going to texture it we're going to model it i'm not like this fantastic modeler so it's very very basic it's very simple extruding and in setting the main goal is to figure out how to use materials put all the, what we just set up into real world learning I do some of uh, UV exporting I show you how to use images to get you know displacement and lots of things take a look at the course it's down inside of there and if you guys are really serious about blender octane I do have an octane community here which we go through we have monthly challenges online courses I mean not online course there's lots of courses inside of here you can get one-on-one -on -one access with me i do private streams inside of their private one-on-one -on -one line calls zoom calls and stuff like that links down in the description keep rendering it's the only way you'll get better guys i hope to see you guys in one of those classes peace